Hello, Zinger Nation. This is Justin Roberti coming to you from uh, Web3 Anarchy. As you may have seen today, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Usually I do uh, a lot of interview-centric uh, stuff. You know, the idea being basically that I never want to be the, uh, the smartest guy in the room. I, I never want to be the first-hand source that you're relying on, not when there's a whole world of people out there who uh, you know are among the experts that I can go ahead and get on the show. But uh, another thing that I did do for, for a long time, something that's big in my, big in my past, is, is I worked in corporate communications and marketing for like 20 years before I started writing for, uh, for media. And so I like to take a look at the public statements that uh, these companies and projects are making about themselves. And for today, I, I wanted to take a look at uh, some of the hubbub you may have heard about Yuga Labs. Um, of course, th this all relates to uh, Ryder Rips, who is accusing them of essentially having uh, 4chan and Reddit-based uh, Nazi or fascist origins to some of their symbol symbolism uh, uh, specifically. So this is obviously very uncomfortable and very damaging potentially for them. Um, you know, and my, my hope is to give you uh, a pretty much a, t a too long didn't read uh, outlook on the accusations that were made and then a l and then a lot of their response, including their legal response to this, um, you know, and then we'll take a look at it ourselves. Like, I mean, in, in essence, uh, I don't know that there's really, I don't think that there's much proven here, uh, in terms of these accusations that were made. Uh, but I'll go through why, why I still think we need to take these kinds of accusations seriously. If, if you have any questions, um, you know, please pop them on the side. We are, we're streaming live and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, bring this up. So. You may have uh, seen this flap over the past few days. Of course, uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, or actually Yuga Labs, is suing. Now, you, uh, and they are suing uh, Ryder Rips. Um, you may have already heard something about this, but I'm going to try and uh, explain this for people who are really not in the know of it. Okay. The accusations that have been made up to this point, hopefully you can read it, is basically he is saying, in essence, that the skull supposedly resembles a specific badge that was used used on certain SS uniforms called the Totenkopf. Excuse my uh, pronunciation, which I'm sure is terrible. Um, it was actually also a World War I symbol and has been adapted into another, a number of other uniforms as well, um, including like the, uh, it's used on the U.S. Marines uniform in some cases. Uh, you know, it's a skull. It, it, essentially, you've got a Jolly Rogers kind of uh, kind of image. Anyway, um, the apes' uh, use of you know simianism, the uh, use of apes themselves, you know, I think honestly left them open to this accusation in some ways. Um, he also talks about the way uh, after saying he put much research into this and a great deal of time. Certain apes have German and Japanese costume props, uh, you know, the Kaiser helmet, the, uh, they call it the, uh, the sushi headband, um, that are supposed to be racist dog whistles. The name Yuga Labs, it doesn't refer to the Kali Yuga, um, you know, we'll get back, get to that a little bit more. The four founders names, uh, Rips is suggesting, uh, you know, unsavory origins to those. Uh, Board Ape Yacht Club and the other side launched on April 30th, um, which also happens to be the day that that uh, Hitler died. It also happens to be my birthday, personally. So I don't, th don't think there's anything particularly nefarious about that day. Those are the kinds of allegations that you're looking at. That and a lot of numerology. And what is insidious about this is that it, it's true that um, right-wing groups, far-right groups, fascist groups online and before the internet actually have historically shown interest in being able to convey message through simple pieces of uh, numerology. Um, so we will talk a little bit about that, but I think that has a lot to do with kind of my, my overarching theme here that although there's some you know, some of it do, does give you reason to think, and I think it's something that we kind of, it's an idea that we need to take seriously, but I don't know that any of it sticks 
in reference to Bored Apes. This is after having given it a few days of, of researching it. Um, you know, there are shocking allegations. But let, let, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So first of all, just to get this out of the way, you know, you've noticed that I, I put a little blur over the actual Totenkopf uh, because I'm not fond of showing anything that's a Nazi symbol. So I'm going to deface it slightly before I post it. But you can see the problem here. You've got a skull looking in the same direction. You've got the double uh, lightning bolts, which are in the same place, the same as uh, Board Ape Yacht Club uh, lettering off to the left and right. Um, and the text is occupying the same areas on top and bottom. And then it shows interposing them as well. This is the most directly I'm going to really show anything that's from his site. I considered using that, but I, like I said, I'm not trying to flash that much Nazi um, imagery, especially if we're not completely sure. Like, I'm not exactly sold on this guy's narrative. But anyway, this is an example and probably one of the biggest things that, that he pointed out. And they are both skulls looking to the left with 18 uh, a teeth. And uh, there's a reason numerologically why um, – why the number 18 matters uh, to the uh, to fascists. Anyway, we might get into that. Now, this is what I thought was interesting. Um, one of the founders got on this right away and published for all of them. The, the uh, uh, Gordon Goner, one of the four founders, posted this on Medium. He must not post very often. He only has 127 followers. I'm surprised. How does he not have more than me? But anyway, um, he posted this early email from when he was developing the logo or talk, uh, describing to the designer what he was looking for. I actually, you know, I try to look, try to talk about the section as like reading the receipts in some ways. And to me, although, of course, this and anything in the digital world could be faked, but um, this is an actual, uh, you know, screen grab that that's showing something that was happening at the time, part of the actual process. So to me, that actually kind of matters. Uh, this is him talking to the uh, talking to the designer. My thoughts on the logo. I'd like to see, Mar see a maritime flag with Board Ape Yacht Club in it. I tried making one with a crappy vector art I downloaded off the internet to give you the general vibe. We're no longer interested in X's, though. We'd rather see dots. I assume they mean over the eyes, probably based on some early sketch they had done. One of the main inspirations for this is the image directly below it, a vintage maritime club with SBC on it. We love the overall look of this, especially the font. As far as the patch inspiration, I think there's a long time history of maritime related patches, especially cheeky ones, which I believe Greg had sent you some examples, some kind of marriage of that aesthetic with modern skateboard BMX streetwear logo is what we're looking for. I'm including some examples of those kinds of logos Finally, there's a New York Hardcore logo, NYHC, as a framework. I love the punk aesthetic this conveys. It's practically a convention in the modern punk scene. Having Board Ape Yacht Club conveyed in a similar way for a patch would be really cool, I think. Um, how it becomes incorporated with apes and maritime is up for debate. Anyway, I thought that that was actually a pretty solid piece of, of evidence for uh, – Gordon Goner to uh, come forward with because you can kind of see what the creative process is. And definitely in terms of their image, you know, they're, they're not half bad at creating um, an image online. I, they've been more successful um, than any of the other uh, generative projects, basically, except for CryptoPunks. And, and obviously, uh, you know, part of why is, is because they do have a, have a certain amount of style. So I'm not surprised to see this kind of thought going into it early on. And when they're talking about the Yacht Club, they're talking about it being, you know, giving off a vibe that's a little bit counterculture. I mean, how counterculture can you be when your NFTs are $200,000 or more? But uh, this is what they said about it at the time, and it seems fairly plausible. And honestly, out of all the allegations made, that this one here is really the one that matters. The, 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 uh, the, the comparison between the Tokov and the uh, and the Abort Ape Yacht Club logo, uh, you can see that there's a resemblance in terms of the overall placement. Now, of course, another thing that Ryder Rick did from there 
is create a copycat NFT project, which he ran on OpenSea without even changing the marks around them. So this is where some of uh, uh, of Ryder Rip's, um, you know, intentions get get a little bit vague for me. Uh, you know, I, he went ahead and and claimed that it was a parody of sorts, although he also positioned it a little bit as being kind of a protest. But um, all he did was literally copy their entries on OpenSea, where most of their transactions are happening too. So he's right next to them copying every bit of the NFT uh, posting, except what you're getting is not a genuine, um, you know, board ape um, NFT. So of course, like that adds a little bit of gain in it for him. And between that and the fact is what they see as a concerted attack on their, on their good name, they've responded legally. And I will read to you part of that. I yesterday hung on a Twitter spaces for a whole hour or listening to this whole be read. That was quite boring, but I will read you just a part of it. In response to the Board Ape, Ape Yacht Club's popularity, defendant Ryder Rips, a self-proclaimed conceptual artist, recently began trolling Yuga Labs and scamming consumers into purchasing his Ryder Rips Board Ape Yacht Club MST, uh, NFTs by misusing Yuga Labs trademarks. He seeks to devalue the board eight NFTs by flooding the NFT market with his own copycat NFT collection using the original board ape yacht club images and calling his NFTs RRBAYC NFTs. He promotes and sells these rider rips board ape yacht club NFTs using the same trademarks that Yuga Labs uses to promote and sell authentic board ape yacht club nfts he also markets these copycat nfts as falsely equivalent to the authentic board ape yacht club nft he then goes on to use yuga labs marks to promote his coming eight market nft marketplace which requires a person to purchase one of his infringing nfts to join the marketplace this is no mere monkey business really they put that in their copywriting even even in their their legal um filing well that okay <laughs> This is no mere monkey business. It's a deliberate effort to harm you, the labs, at the expense of consumers by sowing confusion about whether Rider Rip, Sport Ape, Yacht Club NFTs are in some way sponsored, affiliated, or connected to you, the labs, official Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, uh, the false advertising is not accidental. These actions are calculated, intentional, and willful with the stated purpose of causing actual and monetary harm to Yuga Labs and to the holders of authentic Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs. So, okay. You know, this is all going down at a time when obviously, uh, you know, NFTs all over the place have taken a little bit of a beating. So I think that this is going to put, I mean, I'm, I'm no expert in anything financial or legal, but it does create an interesting timing. And first of all, he timed the drop of his um, expose, his little documentary thing, which is available on YouTube. I'm not going to link to it. But if you want to find it, it is out there to be found. Um, he timed it to coincide with NFT New in New York City or N NFT NYC. So, um, of course, that was not accidental. Um, and then beyond that, you know, it, it's happening at the same time that the market is going down anyway. Um, Rips claims his actions are satire, yet he conveniently rakes in millions of ill-gotten profit from sales of Ryder Rips Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs using Yuga Labs marks to make those sales. Copying is not, not satire, it is theft. And lying to consumers is not conceptual art, it is deception. Um, I should have stated earlier, by the way, Ryder Rips calls himself conceptual artist. Uh, he has a background and, uh, and, and he has done some other drops before this, although of a relatively dodgy nature, if I understand, in short, Yuga Labs wants rips off its marks for good. So you can hardly uh, blame them for feeling this way. And he's obviously relying on a few things going on right now. Honestly, if I was going to completely speculate, I would say that rips might partially be relying on some of the additional exposure, Nazi affiliated groups and alt right groups, uh, such as. Um, such as the uh, Patriot Front, for example, with the attack that they were that they were going to uh, make using that rider truck. Um, so 
you know, people are aware of this, and it is true that you know, with the with the anonymity of online on, of NFT projects, uh, you have to be careful of who you're of who you're dealing with. However, as we examine um, writers' claim, uh, you know, writers' statements claim by claim, I, I really don't know that a lot of it bears up to uh, like anything resembling a bur a reasonable burden of proof. Uh, he makes these statements. They're upsetting statements, of course. They would be very upsetting to holders and to the NFT space, the Web3 space in general. But um, so certainly they're incendiary. But are they really true? I can't, uh, you know, we can't, we, we, he does not make a compelling case that they are in my mind. Although he certainly got, got a lot of people's attention. I'm just going to show you a little bit more of that. So these are responses coming from the founder of Yuga Labs. This is largely coming out of an article that was Pawn Medium, a letter from the founders, which is under Gordon Goner's uh, Medium account. I've taken, um, you know, extracts of it from here so that you can, uh, so that you can read the text. I like to go back to the original text. I like to see what people say about themselves. Um, and yet, yeah, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Allison. Um, I hope that this is a whole new kind of segment for me. I, I didn't mean, like, I would have been happier to start out with something a little bit less serious in nature. I'm not particularly fond of talking about Nazis in the first place, but uh, here we are. These are the allegations that they're dealing with. So this is Yuga Labs answering, this is a direct quote taken from their Medium article. Why does our NFT collection feature apes? Now, bear in mind, part of the reason why they were open to this kind of claim to begin with, aside from the fact that we know that um, there were significant uh, fascist groups and neo-Nazi groups, at least at one point, um, hiding out on Reddit and uh, before that on 4chan or whatever iteration that's in right now. Um, obviously, that is kind of metastasized into a whole other thing, and they've moved on to some other platforms and so forth. Well, we know that that's true. We've heard a lot about... Um, you know, right wing groups recently. So it would be, uh, it, but part of the problem is uh, what they call simianism, which is to say that uh, essentially the Nazis in their propaganda were, were fond of comparing other people, uh, specifically Jewish people, uh, to animals. And they created, uh, famously created propaganda around that. So, uh, is by making uh, an allusion to apes, you could be making an allusion to certain parts of a racist pa uh, past, which, of course, isn't exclusively Nazi for that matter. So we understand where they're coming from, uh, where he's coming from, where, where Ryder is. Uh, that is, provided he's speaking in good faith to begin with. But uh, this is a Board API Club's response to that. There's a long history of people affectionately referring to themselves as apes and crypto which is why the rarest and most valuable nfts in the crypt uh in the crypto punk collection which dates back to 2017 are the apes i love how when we're talking in crypto if we want to go to ancient history we we go to five years ago um as an as a bona fide old person that that blows my mind like five years is nothing to me we like the idea of creating a whole collection around apes who came so wealthy because of crypto's rise that they've been extremely bored What's a board ape to do? Perhaps retreat to a secretive club in the swamp. Okay, fair enough. Um, that's their explanation for why the connection to apes. And also, uh, is Yuga tying uh, tying in with the, the Kali Yuga? Why we're Yuga Labs? We are nerds, and Yuga is the name of a villain in Zelda who has the ability to turn himself and, uh, and other into 2D art. It makes perfect sense for an NFT company. We're also where the Yuga means era in Sanskrit. Gordon spent a decade practicing Hinduism, and the Kali Yuga is the current we are in according to Hinduism. The ADL quite literally laughed at the suggestion that the term Kali Yuga had anything to do with white supremacy. Well, yes. Okay, so, you know, I understand that Kali Yuga is kind of like in certain circles. People will use that as a coded way to refer to their belief system of accelerationism. Like when they talk about a storm, there's a storm coming. There's a, uh, you know, essentially a revolution that they believe is imminent. 
And uh, when you talk about accelerationist white supremacists, essentially what they're looking for is for a speedier, uh, you know, final conflict. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, so they're looking to make that, that inevitable war, a war that they consider inevitable, uh, which will change the face of the globe, happen sooner. Um, doesn't all fit behind the images are public, just the IP is owned. Well, all right. To answer Farhan's question, all right, we'll go ahead and show that real quick and take a little little break from reading this. Um, so, you know, it puts him in an interesting position, doesn't it, Farhan? I, you know, I think that is what uh, what Rips is trying to maintain. I, I think that that's his point exactly. And honestly, I, I think it puts uh, it puts the whole NFT world in a little bit of an awkward situation. I mean, let's remember that up till now, you know, I, I remember uh, a project I interviewed last year was a uh, cool cat. It was Solana Cool Cats. I think it was Solana. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, it was totally a copycat project. That's been relatively standard fare for us up till now. And honestly, when um, you know, when, when they go ahead and make like an Elon Musk cool cat, for example, are they really asking Elon Musk's permission? I mean, in some cases, I'm sure they are when they're working with somebody like Snoop and they, they make a specific NFT for him and so forth. I get that. But often there's been kind of like meme culture sense of what is IP, which is that like if it's out there, I can use it. It's been kind of, kind of an Internet uh, sensibility. Um you know, I don't think you get in trouble legally if you stole their IP. I, I don't I don't know that. I mean, first of all, one thing that I know just lately from that whole Seth Green problem where he had his uh, his ape ganked and he was developing a show around this ape and it turned into kind of a problem because apparently Board Ape Yacht Club assigns you the ability to reproduce and use the image of your ape. So Seth Green was using it to produce an actual TV show in a cartoon that was coming out, and he had to stop production until he could um, gain ownership of his ape back. But you can see it is an unregulated Wild West right now. And what's going to happen, in my opinion, is uh, situations like this are going to force us to all have to play it a lot more straight. I mean, this time last year, half the people running the most successful projects weren't even doxxed. The people running Yuga Labs weren't doxxed, for that matter, um, when they when they first came out. And that was a great and interesting way to run things at the time. Decentralization really is a cool thing. The idea that, you know, the artist uh, or the creator not being relevant to the work or having being able to maintain his own, his anonymity or whatever mystique that was supposed to provide, that's fine. But if you want to buy something that's going to cost you like $250,000, it's probably a good idea to have an idea of who those people are. Um, so I don't know if I completely answered your questions in, in terms of the IP. I think that a lot of this really hasn't been determined yet and that the uh, U.S., uh, government has been reluctant to get involved in it in a meaningful way up until now. For one thing, they don't like to fight cases that they can't win, so they've got to establish precedent. Um, I, I think that situations like this are going to cause them to have to do that. But anyway, I just want to walk you through a little bit more, just so I figure if nothing else, you get a quick overview on kind of what this whole flap is about. So they're saying Yuga is named after a relatively obscure, by the way, I might add, um, Zelda villain from one of the least popular Zelda games in the canon, but that's okay. Um, they said what a, you know create, turns people into two D art, so how perfect? Okay, sounds good to me. Um, for the founders of Yuga Labs, you remember um, Rips was talking about how the screen names of the founders were essentially uh, or the handles, whatever whatever word doesn't make me sound like one hundred and fifty. The Twitter names um, of the handles: Emperor Tomato Ketchup. Uh, no Sass, uh, Gordon Goner, and Gargamel. Um, okay, all problematic in different ways. Ryder Rips uh, points out that Gargamel has been accused of being a, a uh, racist stereotype, essentially. 
um, which he does have some of the qualities of a racist stereotype. Uh, have, I, my, my background, I, I actually have a, an MFA in, uh, in theater, and so I can say uh, with some confidence that if you go back a couple of hundred years, you go back to like Victorian times, yeah, I can see where that comes from. I can see where the, the comparison comes from in terms of costumes, like almost kind of like uh, racist clown costumes that would have been worn at the time for these shows. Gordon Goner is supposed to be an anagram. That's what he said. No sass. Again, I believe it was an anagram. Emperor Tomato Ketchup refers to uh, the Stereo Lab album that he's talking about. It does also refer to rather an unpleasant film that has um, some, I, I believe, I'm not sure how, I've not seen it, I'm not sure how serious it is, but the themes would make one deeply uncomfortable, I believe, uh, in, in terms of the sexuality it portrays so, uh, and, and association with children. So uh, that's kind of unpleasant. But, of course, their response is, no, that is not why Emperor Tomato Ketchum calls himself that. He had his Stereo Lab album. It was ranked number 51st on Pitchfork's list of the, of the 90s best albums. Okay. Uh, no Sass chose his name because Gordon can get very sassy in the morning with him, and it became an inside joke. Well, okay. And Gordon Goner, of course, Goner came from the fact that Gordon was sick and in and out of hospitals a lot over the past 10 years. Of course, uh, over the course of which he started to think of himself as a goner. However, also he thought that name Gordon Goner sounded cool, like Joey Ramon. It is kind of a cool name with a cool alliteration. Um, and Gargamel uh, chose a pseudonym. He was a massive StarCraft fan, um, and so he hated Smurfs in the StarCraft sense. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll tell you this, like. Neither of these people are necessarily proving these things with it, with any receipts. Um, but uh, at the same time, like I, I think the burden should probably fall upon the person trying to prove uh, the Nazis and not necessarily the person trying to defend uh, some thoughts. None of Ryder Rip's claims are really proven. That, that's actually a, a shocking amount of it uh, really relies upon uh, numerology tie-ins and codes, which uh, Board Ape Yacht Club is claiming they, they had, they did not intentionally work in. Um, of course, Ryder Rip also, if he was looking to expose some sort of malfeasance in the industry, he would have been a lot better served by not uh, going and doing his own copycat project. Because what I'm going to point out, I mean, if it was meant to be some sort of protest, then it's a very poor form of protest because he took not only the original images, but also anything that went along with the listing and put it all there. So if he's trying to say that uh, Yuga is dog whistling, racist, fascist, or Nazi uh, messages or uh, symbols into their sales, well, Ryder Rip, you're, you're making exactly identical listings. So surely you are too. I, I don't see how it becomes a parody, how it becomes a form of protest. And I'm fond of parody, but I don't think that's very good parody. Um, some things to take seriously about it is not only, uh, you know, Nazis do like to use numerological codes. Uh, I will go ahead and, and do 18 because it was brought up, you know, because the, the ape uh, skull has 18 teeth. But uh, the idea being that uh, the first digit, one is the first letter of the alphabet, and that, that's A. And then if you look at the eighth digit of the alphabet, that's H. You can imagine what A-H stands for, after all. These are the dog whistle kind of language that the, the languages that uh, you know neo-Nazis really will use in communicating with each other. However, it doesn't eliminate. I mean, it, does, it doesn't mean that, uh, in this case, that correlation uh, proves causality. I, I, don't, I don't think that anybody necessarily did this intentionally. Um, far right wing, you know, one thing that did grab me about the story in the beginning is that honestly, let that be a uh, cautionary tale. Uh, is, is he donating to charity? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know, Allison, that that's a great point. You know, like, I will have to look into what he is doing with that. I know he's starting his own NFT marketplace, which again kind of makes his approach to this seem awfully sus. Um, 
you know, this is all the more reason, guys, why, like, at all times and in all things, you really need to do your own research and make sure that you know who you're dealing with. Um, for the the, uh, the far right wing, you know, has been caught on different social media platforms chatting to each other about how they would to like uh, like to mainstream uh, their use of language and their use of images. And we're kind of kidding ourselves by saying, uh, you know, by, by thinking that words don't hurt. Words create ideas. Images create ideas. There's a reason why uh, the SS uh, imagery has stuck around, not only because of the heinous things they did, but because they were consciously trying to generate sort of a, a grabby, um, macho kind of image. Fascism kind of relies on that. Fascism is is a plague, is is a is a virus of sorts that infects other political systems. So we should remember that. That is, so, in other words, you know, fascism isn't a standalone form of government in and of itself. It's something that other forms of government are are vulnerable to. So we always have to protect um, our own democracy that we live in and not take it for granted that that uh, things can't change and sometimes change for the worse. However, in this particular case, I really get the impression, um, you know, having just done a couple of days of research around it, that I think this is a, per a person looking to, perhaps he's sincere in some of the claims that he's making, but he really hasn't made them in a supportable way. And it does undermine him that he's kind of using this as an opportunity to sort of build up toward his own exchange and build up toward his own protest, but completely copycat uh, version um, you know, I mentioned in my last slide, uh, but but didn't say it that like, uh, you know, in in some ways, like when you're talking about fascism, it, it's a trick to try and walk that line of talking about it without giving them even even wider footprint in our headspace. We don't necessarily want to let these images, uh, you know, live rent free in in, in our uh, in our minds. After all, you know, like. The fact that Board Ape Yacht Club is not such a project is very important. I mean, which, if I'm guessing, I, I would I would say that these are not necessarily founded claims. Uh, there were a couple of claims he made about different writers that people that people among the founders had written about in the past on their thesis on. All right, I mean that's a little bit interesting that you know they wrote about writers that that uh, the Nazis were perhaps fond of. That that might be true, but. Uh, and that's perhaps a little bit troubling, but that has nothing to do with like they're trying to rip off a Nazi symbol and use it as the uh, use it as the logo and so forth. So I just kind of wanted to get anyone who wanted to tune in sort of a quick overview of what was actually being said and then what their official response was without having to get too grimy and get too into it reading all the stuff that they're posting. Um, you know, rips put together a very um, thorough, if this is a takedown, it's a very thorough takedown. He tries to persuade by having many, many points around it. It's just when you examine the points individually, they're very small and they're not necessarily conclusive. Like really the Simeonism thing and the skull logo are really kind of the two big compelling things. Everything else is really, is really very subjective. So anyway... Um, thank you for coming and hang out with me for a half an hour while I talked about this issue. On uh, Wednesday, we're going to have a uh, another interview for the show. I think we have a, a GameFi interview lined up, so I will let you know about that on Twitter. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter, and um, you know I hope that you all have a great day. Of course, things are still rough out there in the market for NFTs and for uh, crypto, so everyone take the time to take care of yourself and occasionally look at content other than crypto-related content. Try and get outside. It was a beautiful day, at least here in Pennsylvania, so I hope you got to enjoy it. And thank you so much, guys. I, uh, I'll talk to you soon. We'll see you Wednesday. Take care. Like and subscribe, by the way. Thank you. And here I go, anticlimactically, getting my music. Take care, guys. <laughs>